Good morning, saints of God. Good morning. We want to welcome you to our 8 a.m. Pickham Journey Church service. If we all would stand, we'd like to sing a congregational song. And this is the feeling we should all have, especially not today, but every day. I woke up this morning with my mind. Stand. Glory and honor. 
Father God, also we pray for the sick and shut ins. Comfort them, Father God. Let them know that you're still in charge and you know what's going on. Yes, Father God, because you made this big universe, Father God. Yes. So you know about each and every one of us, Father God. Yes. But Father God, by us being human, Father God, we ask you to comfort us yes. in the time of the read, Father yes. God. Give us strength, Father God, yes. where we are weak, Father yes. God. Where we're towing down, Father God, build us up this morning. Let each and every one know that, Father God, that your son paid the price for us to be where we are right now. So, Father God, we give you praise, we give you honor, and we give you glory. Father God, we can't uh, say enough to praise you. But, Father God, all our praises go to you. All of them, Father God. Whatever we might do, we give you praise, we give you honor, and glory. In your son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Glory, glory.
awesome God. Come on, let me try one more time for the people in the back. He is an awesome God. But let's say it like we believe that he is an awesome God. touch nobody, but somebody next to you, you ought to be able to help on and say, I know he's awesome. You ought to say it like you believe and say, I know he's awesome. Because when I woke up this morning, if he gave me another day to be on top of the ground, and the ground wasn't on top of me, that's awesome. But then when I laid it down last night, I didn't have nobody kicking the door, nobody tried to rob me, nobody tried to do that to me.
Where is he? The king asked. Ziba answered, He is at the house of Makia, son of Amiel in Lodabar. So King David had brought him from Lodabar, from the house of Makia, son of Amiel. When Mephibosheth, son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, came to David, he bowed down to him in honor. David said, Mephibosheth, at your service, he replied, don't be afraid. David said to him, for I will surely show you kindness for the sake of your father, Jonathan. I'll restore to you all the land that belonged to your grandfather, Saul, and you will always eat at my table. Mephibosheth bowed down and said, what is your servant that you should notice a dead dog like me? Verse 9, the king summoned Ziba, Saul's steward, and said to him, I have given your master's grandson everything that belonged to Saul and his family. But verse 8, I'm sorry, verse 7 is where we want to get our subject from. Don't be afraid. David said to him, for I will surely show you kindness for the sake of your father, Jonathan. I will restore to you all the land that belonged to your grandfather, Saul. But this is shout for, and you will always eat at my table. You may claim to see grass with a flower face, but the word of our God shall stand forever. But don't y'all make me mad. Paul Paul's still watching and looking. Brothers and sisters, I am to talk to you from the subject, your table is ready. Your table is ready. Grass of the flower fades, word of our God shall stay forever. Your table is ready. Brothers and sisters, boys and girls, children of all ages, you really don't know everybody until God shows you them for who they really are. Pilgrim Journey, if I can share with you this morning, God doesn't have to fix the problem to give you the finished work. Uh, Pastor, you don't have to check behind God. You just have to trust and believe in and obey. Uh, Jonathan and David are best friends. They make a pact, Brother Deacons, they make a pact because they're partners. They make a pact, a covenant together to look out for the offspring of Jonathan after his death. David's reign is found in 1 Samuel chapter 20. That was a promise that was made. But then 2 Samuel chapter 9, the promise is kept. Sometimes God just wants to see if you will hold on to his promise when you don't see it yet. Let me rewind, press play, say it one more time. David's reign starts in 1 Samuel chapter 20. That's a promise made there. But in 2 Samuel chapter 9, the promise is kept. And like I said to you, sometimes God just wants to see if you'll hold on to his promise, even though you ain't seen it yet. Well, brothers and sisters, let me share what you give it to you plain. Uh, just because God promised something don't mean he's going to do it right then. Uh, you got to trust him even when you can't trace him. Even though you ain't seen it yet, you still got to hold on to what he said. And I, I, there, there's some folks in here, if you, if you don't tell the truth, that's cool. You, you've been sick before and you said, God... You, I know what the doctor said, and they, they, you, you promised me, according to your word, that by your stripes I'm healed. And I ain't got healed yet, but I'm going to hold on to your promise. God, you, you said you were going to bring me out, and I ain't got out yet. But sometimes it's not about God bringing you out, it's about letting him get in. And if you let him get in the middle of what you're going through, you can make it go as he get in. I ain't got nobody to talk to me. And, and Pilgrim Jenny, can I help y'all this morning? When we pray, we ought to ask God to come on in. Not always about bringing us out, because if we let him in, he can work us while we're in. And as long as he gets in the middle of it, he can work it out. 
But even if he don't work it out yet, as long as he got his hand on I wish I had somebody talk to me. As long as you put it all in his hand, he ain't got to tell you when he's going to bring it out. You just got to trust him until he do. Jonathan has a son. In 2 Samuel chapter 4, Jonathan has a son, Saul's grandson. And the Bible says, when you read that piece, when they hear of the death of Saul and Jonathan, Saul dies and then Jonathan dies, there is a war that takes place. And in the Bible reads, there's a nurse that runs with Mephibosheth. He, he's five years old. He's not, he's not old enough to run fast enough to keep up to run from danger. So the nurse, his caretaker, picks him up, Pastor. And what, what happens is, as she's running in panic, and y'all know how we do, if somebody in here starts running, we're going to run behind. You ain't got to know what's going on. You just have somebody break out and run, and everybody's going to start running. You can tell me the details when we get to where we're going, but when we start running, everybody going. I wish I had somebody tell the truth. Let somebody here start running and ain't the Holy Ghost. Everybody will get to running. And we'll talk about it later on. This nurse starts running with Mephibosheth. He's not old enough to keep up with the crowd. His war has broken out. That Saul and Jonathan are dead. Mephibosheth is the only one left from the lineage of Saul and Jonathan. And the Bible says that the nurse runs, and as, as she's running in haste, she drops him. She drops him to where he's broken both legs, to where there's no function. He's laying in both feet. And here, brothers and sisters, his legs are broken. He's laying in both feet. Verse 1 is where we find the start of the tension of our text. David the king now asks, is there anyone left to show kindness for Jonathan's sake? David gives Ziba, which is Saul's servant that's still working in the estate of Saul and Jonathan. He asks Ziba, a servant of the house of Saul, one, he gives him one job to do. He said to him, tell me who's left in the household of Saul that I may show kindness to him. For Jonathan's sake. He gives Ziba one job. But you know how we give folks one job and they take it and take multiple jobs, right? Ziba says, there is one. His name was Mephibosheth, but watch this. He says, Mephibosheth, but he's laying in both feet. Let me say it one more time. He says, his name is Mephibosheth, but he's laying on his feet. Uh, David didn't ask him what was wrong with him. He just asked him who was left. And you know some folks like that, you, when they call your name, they'll call your business too. Uh, God only want to know who's left. He already knows what's wrong with you. And, and you, you, have to, you have to watch, there may not be no folk down here in the pilgrimage journey, but I know some folks at churches I go to, they'll call your name and call your business at the same time. But the thing about it, God is not concerned about your business because he already knows it. He still want to use you anyway. I ain't got nobody talking to me. From the pulpit, from the glass stand to the back door, where it's just it. All of us got a track record with God, but he has not counted us guilty. He's just given us grace and mercy. I ain't got nobody talking to me. Can I get about two of y'all that be shame to testify? I got a rough sheet with God, but thank God you don't know it. My mama don't know it. But God knows it, but because of the blood of Jesus, he washed yeah. all of my sins away. Yeah. And brothers and sisters, God says to your naysayers and your enemies, thank you for telling me what's wrong with it when I already know. He says, but I still want to use him or her for my kingdom business. Brothers and sisters, the fibber chef is special because Number one, the covenant on his life supersedes the crippleness in his life. Yeah. God, let me say it one more time. I got to have it all by myself. Yeah. The covenant on his life 
supersede the crippleness in his life. Jonathan has a son which is lame in the King James Version, which is lame on his feet. Don't y'all forget that. Put a pen right there. I'm coming back to get it like some chicken. If you want to know who your haters and your enemies really are, they won't just ever speak well of you but not bring it up what's wrong with you. But can I tell you, I like the tricks commercial, silly wearing tricks up for kids. The thing about God is, God already knows, He still knows that when He calls on you, He can use you with your disabilities. Yeah. 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 Hey, everybody, help me talk. Silver says, watch this, Pastor. I love this part right here. You can have this for free. I promise you, you my boy, you can have this for free. Preach it like it's yours. I know you can do something with it. Silver says in the King James Version, Pastor, that He's laying all His feet. Drake, he's laying on his feet. I got a problem with that. Because Ziba not only gives him his disabilities, but he's trying to discredit him because of what's wrong with him. But the shock part that we skip over is the fact that he's laying on his feet. Something wrong with him. He got problems, but he's still on his feet. You got it now? He can't be like everybody else, but he's still on his feet. He won't let what's wrong with him stop him from getting to the table. Come here, PJ. Y'all act like y'all got questions walked over your head. Let me show you something. It's wrong. Something wrong with all of us in here, but we still on our feet. We got problems. We got issues. We got circumstances and situations, but we still on our feet. The ground should be on top of us, but we're on top of the ground. We're still on our feet. Brothers 
sisters, you know you're chosen when folks watch your every move. Oh God, yeah. Don't try to make me work hard this morning. It's too early for that. You know you're chosen by God when folks are watching your every move on your page. Come on, here y'all. They watching your page. They don't even like you, but they like everything you post. <laughs> and can I give y'all this for free? It's not that they like it, it's that they're looking. Yes. And you know folks that don't like you, they're just pushing the like button, like button, only because they're looking. And God will bless you enough to let the same folks that don't think that you don't know that they don't know that you love, they don't like you. Because he'll use the same folk that don't like you to bless you. I ain't got this right here if you read your Bible. Mephibosheth is in Lodabar. Lodabar is the girl. He's in a low place. He's laying on his feet and he's in Lodabar in a low place. He's in a low place because of his condition and also lives there because of his circumstances. And when he gets before the king, Mephibosheth been down so long, all he knows is to be down on himself. Y'all this right there in the scripture because the Bible says he fell on his face. <laughs> David says to him, don't be afraid. So David has to address to him, has to address the fear to Mephibosheth because of the law. The law was, y'all, that David was supposed to kill everybody that was a part of the family of Saul. But David is the king now. And because of his covenant with Jonathan, he addresses the fear that Mephibosheth has. And tells him, don't be afraid. Come here, y'all. The stuff that we should have died for. The king spoke of and said, don't be afraid. Why? Because grace I already put in place before you even thought about messing up. And so since you thought that it was the end, I had grace to step in and let you know I, I still have you covered when I should have uncovered you. And my brothers and sisters, Mephibosheth's supposed to die, but the king says, I'm not killing you. I'm showing you kindness. You're supposed to die, but grace won't let you die because the king has to show Kindness covenant keeps Mephibosheth alive. And when you know you're in the face of the one who can help you, you've got to learn how to change your position. Verse 8, he says, I'm no better than a dead dog. And he, 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 he don't know what it is to know what kindness looks like because he's been in a low place so long that he can't see himself do better. And brothers and sisters, can I help somebody right here? You may not want to tell nobody because you're dressed up on the outside. You got your whole good church face on. And you got your good son to go to meeting face on. And the thing about the fellowship, he's doing what all of us do. He's not struggling with broken legs. He's struggling from low self-esteem. Because when you've been broken so long, you know how to dress it up to act like you ain't nothing wrong with you. I ain't got nobody to talk to me. Yeah, I mean, you, you cry so much, but you know how to put that good church face on to make it seem so folks won't see the tear marks that have been on your face all night. Uh, you, you know how to come in here and smile with your good Sunday smile and ask if uh, everything is teaching you and God on first name basis. You know how to smile and keep from frowning. But somebody else made the mistake and dropped him and left him messed up. And the good news is, someone dropped him, but God picked him up. Yeah. And Pilgrim Journey, can I encourage some of y'all in here? There's some folks in your life that dropped you. Because uh, they didn't know how to treat you. They didn't know how to talk to you. 
So they dropped you and, and thought that you was just going to wither off and die because if you didn't, they didn't have you in their life, uh, you, you was going to be nothing. But can you just shout yourself and say, I'm still here. I, I still look good. I'm still living good. I feel even better when that joker left me. Because I got a better smile now than everybody that thought that I needed them. After I looked around and saw I didn't need them, I'm living better than I did before. Because when folks drop you, God has come along and picked you up. Since you've been in a low place so long, you start looking like what you've been in. But the shout is, the king won't forget about you. He'll send somebody to come pick you up and bring you to the king's table. When they drop you, the covenant on your life supersedes uh, the crippleness in your life. And brothers, can I share this with you? Not only does the covenant on your life supersede the crippleness in your life, can I tell you secondly, God doesn't have to fix you to bless you. That God doesn't have to fix you to bless you. He did, y'all used to sing a song with my brother that sleeps in the arms of Jesus. He can fix what is broken. Whatever is broken up. Yeah, y'all remember the song. And I just want to remind y'all, God can fix what is broken. You've been broken. Some of us are broken now, but he's still. Yeah. He, he can fix what is broken without fixing it. God covers you even though you're not cured. Hear the shout, Pastor, not God. Thank you for letting me come and play with y'all today. Y'all so nice, so sweet. Uh, God uh, allowed David to touch, uh, allowed himself to touch David's heart to show kindness to Mephibosheth for Jonathan's sake. But watch this, he makes a covenant uh, with Mephibosheth that he made with his dad. He says, now, all I need you to do is just get to the table. And, and, and one of the things, Pastor, that I love about, about, about this story is the fact that Mephibosheth is laying on his feet. He has a disability. And he can't, he can't walk like you and me walk. He can't hop, skip, and jump. But the good news is, He's going to the king's table. Now watch this. When you get to the king's table, it's not like a picnic table. When you get to the king's table, that, that's fine china there. That, that, that's the china dishes that mama only pull out on holidays. Uh, you can't eat on them. But you only eat on them dishes. I, I wish I had somebody to read like I was reading. If anybody remember that big China cabinet that it took three, four of y'all to move all at one time? Come on, come on, ain't you probably still got a China cabinet somewhere? Come on, somebody testify. You remember growing up if you had one, if you were blessed with mama didn't have a China cabinet. They had all them dishes and all them glasses in there. And, and that, 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 that good silver or that good gold around. You felt like somebody when mama didn't pull their place out. So, so when the king uh, when you're sitting at the king table, that's the good trainer. That's the good glasses. Not the jelly glasses, but the good glasses. Yeah, that you can hold like this with two fingers under it. That, that, the good glasses. To act like you, like you down there at Vic and Anthony's, them type of glasses. When you go to the king's table, he's sitting there at the king's table, and the king's table is prepared. And by the here's the shout right here. Mephibosheth was at the king's table. When he pulled, when they pulled him up to the table, the focus is no longer on his legs. You know why? Let me show you. When he sit down at the king's table, there's a tablecloth coach that's at the king's table. It's not that picnic table. With their, with their checkerboard cover on it. Yeah. It's that fine linen table. Yeah. It's that fine linen tablecloth. Y'all remember them? Some of y'all got one of them? 
It's that thick one that if you put a stain on it, you got you can't get you got to get it out right then. Yeah. So while he's sitting at the king's table, yeah. there's a tablecloth that's there. Yeah. So let me show y'all what happens when the field chef sits at the king's table, his disability. Uh, when he gets to the table, uh, yeah. because of the tablecloth, yeah. you can't see his condition. Yeah. You, you can't see, yeah, his condition. Because now he's been covered. And, and, and all he had to, uh, all he had to do is get to the king's table. And sit down at the king's table because as soon as he got to the table, what used to bother him is no longer a bother because now he's been covered. And even though he hasn't been cured, he's been covered. And some of us in here can testify God ain't cured me yet, but I am covered. And since I've been covered by the blood of the Lamb, I can testify my table is ready. Come on, let's ride. Let, let, can, can I get somebody in the building that can testify I ain't all where I need to be? But I thank God I'm covered. You can't see my mess and I can't see yours. Because I've been covered. And what have you been covered by? I've been covered by the blood. And somebody said, what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood. And I wonder, do I have somebody before I take my seat that can testify the blood still has power. The blood Watches. The blood still covers. I'm just talking about the blood. If there ain't anybody here that can testify this morning, I'm covered by the blood. I've made mistakes. I've had some ups and downs. I still make mistakes. I got some scars on my record, but I thank God I'm covered. Can I get a witness to talk back to me and PJ? It ain't shame to testify. You ain't got it all together, but you've been covered. Your record ain't clean with God, but you've been covered. Because on a Friday, on a hill called Calvary, that's where I was covered. Can I get a witness here to testify to somebody? Testify on the old road. I know I'm covered because since Jesus came into my heart, since Jesus brought me this morning, since Jesus started me on my way, I ain't ashamed to testify that I got Jesus in my life. I got Jesus when I woke up this morning. I got Jesus when free laid around. Can I get some help in here to testify to somebody? Let somebody know you're covered. Tell them you're covered regardless of what the enemy tried. You're covered. Saying, you know, somebody right and tell me, I'm covered, baby. I'm covered. You might know my business, but I'm still covered. You might know my Facebook stuff, but I'm still covered. You can talk about me all you want, but I'm still covered. Sticks and stones may break my bone, but I'm still covered. Scandalize me if you want me, but I'm still covered. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. The doors of God's church is open. 
There might be somebody that's here this morning. That could still say, I'm covered because I'm at the king's table now. And just as you get to the king's table, it don't mean you're not going to have problems. It don't mean you're not going to have circumstances, situations. But you're covered. Can't nobody hold nothing over your head when you're covered by the law. Because the blood of Jesus covers a multitude of sin. Let them talk about you. Let them lie on you. Let them do all that stuff to you. But you're covered. Though the stars keep on raging in my life. To tell the night from day Still the hope that lies within Is reassured And I keep my eyes upon the distant shore
This is my uh, cousin, but when you're older than your cousin, he's more like a nephew. And I um, helped him shape him and raise him and being a part of his life and trying to show him the way to go, how to be kind to people, how to be good to people, be seen and been able to watch myself and my wife. And then he went and got him a beautiful wife like my wife. Amen. Hey, <laughs> One time I said, I said, it'll take you so long to get married so I'm trying to find a beautiful wife that knows God. Yeah. And so he's yeah. done that. I, I must say that I'm proud of him and for him to come today. And let me say this to you to be very transparent. When somebody's your family, they're close to you and they know you, it can be hard for him to worship with you. Yeah. Because he knows me from a child. Yeah. And even yeah. though um, you know, I've trained him in the right way to go. He could have been watching me going the wrong way as well. Amen? Yeah. Because we all have our faults and flaws. Yeah. So for him to come is very special to me today. And so we're thankful to have you all to come and to share. And if I don't teach him nothing else, Mimi, I taught him how to eat. <laughs> oh, you know the food. When we see it, and so we're thankful for that. I'm asking, won't you all stand? First lady, come join me in this celebration. Won't you all stand where you are? I'm going to ask you, as the head of your household, to have a word. Amen? Amen. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. All right, we're here today to join uh, to make this our church home. Uh, let's say about two or three Sundays ago, we were sitting in a restaurant at Mimi's, of course. And uh, walked in and they were sitting out seat. <laughs> so after we chit chatted one day, we were chit chatting, and uh, somehow the church came up. And uh, Shalev was like, So, what church are we going to? And I was like, We haven't been going to church lately. And she looked shocked. She said, You know better. And that's why we're here, because I know better. <laughs> Amen. talked about it and he leads our household and he's a man of God and he said wherever you want us to join I'm gonna follow right with you and so we're happy to be here and we're happy to join and I'm so excited to have family home here. Mother won't you stand um, this is her nephew and her family I want you to stay on the uh, first lady you stand on one side tell me where you amen we are uh, I could sing that song right now, saying we are family. <laughs> or I could sing the Frankie Bella one, says we are one. Yeah. That's the way it is. Listen, I want to say this to y'all, parents, and pastor. If you can't love your family, if you can't be together as one with your family, the Bible teaches that we should love one another, but it also says, how can you love me, whom you've never seen, and you can't love the Negroes in your own family? I'm teaching, how can, how can we love each other as a church and church members, but can't stand and so I thank God today that we are able to stand in solidarity as a family because this is the example that we have to give to the church to stand as a family. So I challenge you all today, if you have family members that you have off, if you have family members that you have out with, or some that you just may not have touched or reached out to, listen, when you get in the parking lot, you call them up. And you say, child, I don't know what we fell out about. Because right. you don't even remember. <laughs> but child, God told me to call you this morning yeah. just to tell you that I love you. Yes. Okay. Okay. Listen, uh, Sister Chandra, we want to invite you. We want to welcome you. We want to thank you. Um, our expectations are so high for you because we were raised in the church. We know better. We know what we're supposed to do already. Ain't no training, they're gonna teach you. 
for which you already know. I know your parents very well. And I know what they've instilled in you. Young people, do this while the blood runs warm. Get yourself somewhere. Get a church home. Get your church family. Learn what it means to be a part of a vital and vivacious church family. So we welcome you. I want to offer you the right hand of fellowship. Thanking you and welcoming you into the Pilgrim Journey family, which is now your church family, your church home. We'll see you every Sunday except when you're at the casino. I already know, so I understand that you gotta go sometime. Amen. <laughs> but what you gotta do now, when you hit, <laughs> ah, too short, man. when you hit, bring me out. If you gonna go, look at she get excited over there. She said, "Baby, we can go." <laughs> Not come on, give God a hand of glory, give God a hand of praise. Go to our brothers and sisters, go to the church, go to the church, the movement of orientation. What a blessing. Did you leave the uh, times already? You left the times already? Amen. Amen. It's a big deal of time. But not the casino time. That's it, that's it. Amen. Deacons, thank you all. Deacons, I'm going to dismiss you along with uh, Pastor Stroman to go to the back so that we can get consecrated and prepare for... Uh, but Charles, you got to go? You got to go? You got to go. You can be dismissed too. I was going to send you to the back. I want you to learn how to consecrate communion just in case you ever become a deacon. You never know. You never know. Brother Henry, are you... I want you to go back too, amen? You got to start teaching you. Early, go back. If they ask you why you're back there, tell them I sent you. Amen. Wow. What a word. 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 Man. What a blessing. Amen. We thank God for Pastor Strowman. Uh, First Lady Talia, won't you stand? This is the wife of Pastor Shalom. Pastor Shalom, you gotta always, always tell us who your wife is. Amen? Let me let you do it. Come on. Come on. Pastor Shalom, introduce your wife. Amen? You know I love you, Pastor. You, you know why I said that you cover, even though you got disability? Yeah. I know he got one. So. <laughs> We the same birthday month. I think our birthday is a day apart. So I understand that. So when that other twin kick in, I understand. But everybody know that's my finger and a sticker right there. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Listen, um, what a blessing now. I don't know if y'all noticed anything about me different today, um, but today. And a mask on. And I'm lax. I don't want to wear my mask. Amen. But when, we, when things start changing, the numbers are going back up. Um, they got new variants that are more dangerous and more contagious. And so I got two, uh, three, three, three pastors, friends of mine, that are out with COVID. Amen. And I'm going to be going down to cover for one on today because he has COVID. And so I'm practicing my mask again. Amen. And as your pastor and leader, I recommend that you practice masking up again as well. Once again, numbers change, things change, hospital rates are going up, sickness rates are going up. I'm seeing it from my own self. And when we learn more as things go on, so now we're learning that yes, it's good to get the vaccine, but you can still get COVID. All three of my pastor friends have been vaccinated. And they have COVID. So we know now that you can get COVID and be vaccinated. Okay? Now it won't be as bad for you they say you won't be hospitalized, you won't die from it, but you can still get it. Now also, to my young people, I want to encourage you, since the majority of the hospital um, 
people that are hospitalized right now are the young people who are not vaccinated. I, I, it's, it's, let me say something, this is hard to do because I've got three children. I'm their pastor. I have vaccinations here at the church and none of them got vaccinated. I'm their pastor, I'm their dad. But they decided that they're intelligent. But they, could, they decided, Daddy, we're going to watch you for a while. <laughs> we're gonna see how this thing works with you. And, and they not that they're intelligent, yet I'm their pastor daddy. But I still respect uh -huh. the decision that they made to not to vaccinate. But I prefer to vaccinate it? Yes. Do I know what this vaccination is going to do to me later on in life? No. And now that they got new variants, this is what my daughter told me, well, my smart, smart daughter. You know, she's, she's smart. She said, Daddy, so this is what's going to happen. You're going to get vaccinated. There are going to be new variants that come out. They're going to have another vaccination that covers all the variants. But she said, well, the people who already got the vaccination aren't going to be qualified for that vaccination. I said, Morgan, you crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and now as I'm watching things progress, with new variants and this variant and that and this and that and the other. So we just don't know. So while a part of me wants to encourage you to get vaccinated, I also don't want to take responsibility. Amen? Amen. For what could or may or may not happen. So I want you guys to more than anything be prayerful, be mindful, ask God what it is that you should do what's best for your life and your family. Amen? Amen. Now, we have an a, a Oscar Town Ferris with us. He's running for judge. Oscar, I'll allow you 2.2 seconds to tell them who you are, what you're running for, and how good you're going to be as a judge in Fort Bend County. Amen? Amen. Thank you, guys.
Amen. Amen. 